You might find this hard to believe, but most of my life, I've spent living in a pretty cluttered home. Uh, that was, I guess, unless someone was gonna be coming over and then we would quick rush and put everything away and tidy it up by the time the doorbell rang. But everything changed in my life when I discovered minimalism and I began owning less. And now, for the most part, I mean, there's still four people that live in my home, but for the most part, our home is clutter-free and it is tidy, every room, almost all of the time. Now, I've helped a lot of people declutter their home over the last 10 years. And I've kind of broken the process down into four steps. Four steps to a decluttered home. Now, these are pretty broad and there are a lot of details in each of them, but I just want you to start thinking through how would I start living in a clutter-free home? The first step is the one that most people don't realize is so important. The first step is believe it is possible. Believe that you can live in a clutter-free home. A lot of people have lived in a cluttered space for so long. It's the home they grew up in. It's what their home has always been. And they seem to think that that's just who they are, or they seem to think the project is too overwhelming and they can never make it true. But you can, you can do it. You can live in a clutter-free home if that's what you want. So believe it's possible. It's not gonna happen overnight. It's gonna require step by step, drawer by drawer, item by item, but you can do it. Believe that it's true and then start taking that step. The second key to living in a clutter-free home is remove the excess. Begin removing those things from your home that you don't need. Start asking questions of every single item. Do I need this? Do I use this? Why do I have it? What would I use if I didn't have this? Now, there are some things that are easy to get rid of, the junk in your junk drawer or the clothes that you don't wear, the boxes of things you haven't opened in 10 or 15 years. And there are some things that are more difficult, your book collection, your sentimental item collection, your yarn stash, whatever it might be. And there are areas of the home that are easier than others. A living room or bedroom might be easier than the kitchen or the home office or the garage. Here's the tip, here's the key. Move through your home starting in the easiest spaces first. Don't go try to tackle the attic right off the bat. Get rid of the things from your living room that you don't need or your bedroom or a couple of your closets. Build some momentum, see some progress, and you'll get to those harder places later. So number one, believe it's possible. Number two, remove the excess. Number three, implement clutter-free habits. For most of my life, I skipped the second step and I thought the key to a clutter-free home was just organizing my things better and constantly tidying up stuff. But that becomes very overwhelming when you own too many things. But if you do the second step well, if you remove the excess, if you remove duplicate items, you will find clutter-free habits much easier to implement than you ever thought possible. Things like cleaning up the kitchen in the evening, having an evening routine, returning daily use items at the end of every day. It's an important step and it's required to live in a clutter-free home. It just becomes much easier than people think once we've done a good job of removing the excess. And the fourth and final step is this, to having a clutter-free home. We need to slow the accumulation of stuff we don't need. At some point, we need to break the influence of consumerism. We need to realize that we don't need to buy everything available at the store. Just because it's on sale doesn't mean I need to bring it home. Ask, do I really need this? Do I really want to care for this? Do I have a spot for it? 
Do I have something that already accomplishes this in my life? Perhaps more importantly, begin to see that your money and your life can be spent on greater pursuits. That the accumulation of physical possessions is not the greatest thing that you can do with your life. And so we begin to see how our money and time can be used on more important things. We begin to accumulate less and less going forward. It's a different process, it's a different conversation, but it's an important one. You can even find videos on this channel about how to overcome the influence of consumerism. Again, these are broad thoughts. These are broad steps. There are plenty of videos about how to specifically do each of these things in your life. But if you want to live in a clutter-free home, believe it's possible. Remove the excess, implement clutter-free habits, and slow the accumulation of possessions going forward. You can do it. I've done it in my own life. I've seen countless others do it. You can do it as well.